Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're in Vis, Croatia for the don'ts of cruising. Because we're really going to focus on things that you don't want to do when you do cruise so you can have a better time whether you're doing a river cruise, a coastal cruise, or a round the world cruise or whatever. Anyway, the first don't I have for you when it comes to cruising is don't assume every cruise line is the same or every cruise is the same. Just because a cruise has a similar itinerary to another cruise does not mean they're equal. The itinerary, i.e. the ports of call, where they go, is only part of the cruise. You also want to look at is how big the ship is. My Belle de la Adriatique only has 200 passengers, so I got to know a lot of nice, really older French people when I was here. But if you're on other ships that can have 3,000 or 4,000 passengers, it's going to be a different experience. Also, the excursions that are on offer could be different. Usually in Europe, your basic excursions are doing a tour of the city. But if you've got a bigger ship, you might have, well, we've got an option to do a tour of the city, or maybe we're going to do zip lining, or maybe we're going to go on a bike ride or something like that. You can have those options. So just realize, don't think that every cruise is the same. So you really need to do your research when you do cruise. Now, the second don't I have for you when you're going to go cruising is when you're coming into the town that the cruise leaves from, don't fly in the day that the cruise leaves leaves because if there's any delay in your flights and you miss that your cruise when it takes off it's up to you to get to the next port they're not going to say oh that's horrible we'll wait for you that won't happen okay so what i recommend is fly in a day beforehand one you get to adjust and maybe if there's a big time change or something like that you can get things cleaned up you can move your luggage around and stuff like that but just don't fly in that day that you that you're going to take off because there's too many things that can happen also, I've seen some travelers come in the day their cruise is, but they get in late. And so they miss the orientation, they miss ideas where they're supposed to go, those kind of things. And that can have a big ramification on your cruise. So give yourself that extra day beforehand to see that first port city before you take off, okay? Now, the next stone I have for you is don't lose your ID. Now, I'm not saying your passport or your driver's license, because you know that. But when you're on a cruise, they're gonna give you some form of ID, because that ID will be maybe to get into your room, but also that you check in and out of leaving the boat, but also since most cruise ships are actually kind of a cash-free society, let's say, you might be paying with that as well. So do not you lose your card, because that can be a problem. Also, kind of going along with that, don't lose your audio guide if they give you one because you might have to pay to replace it. So just try to keep, keep track of those things. Now my fourth don't for you is don't skip the introduction where they explain the excursions, safety procedures, those kind of things. Don't skip that meeting. Why? because you need those to understand is here's when breakfast is, here's where lunch is, here's where the buffet is, here's where the nicer restaurant is. And it gives you that nice background. Now, if you travel a lot on cruises, you'll understand how these things work, but especially for first time or second time cruisers, it's really important to go to those to get an idea of who the people you need to talk to are, where things are, how the excursions work. So you're making sure you're on the first tender if you're on the English speaking tour, and you're on the third tender if you're on the Spanish speaking tour. So you wanna look at those Kind of things all right now the next don't i have for you is don't assume that that price is all inclusive look some cruise lines put everything together with you with the price which is awesome but not everyone does so you might be paying extra for the excursions okay or you may be paying extra for the drinks and stuff like that and in, in europe you'll see a lot of times the cruises will come with the basic beer and a basic wine kind of stuff so you get those for free but if you want some brandy or if you want some whiskey that might be an additional charge. So you do have those things. And some cruises offer drink packages that might actually include soda too if, you're, if you've got kids. And what you wanna look for in those is kind of judge like how much is their average drink? And if it's like $50 a day for your drinking package, are you gonna drink $50 worth of alcohol? You might wanna judge those things. You might say, you know what, it's easier for me to buy one at a time versus buying the package. But don't think that one price that you pay is gonna cover everything because there's always gonna be some incidentals here and there, okay? And kind of going along with that, with the prices and those excursions and stuff like that, don't feel like you have to do the excursions from your boat. Now, some 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 cruise lines, their cruises are really good. I've been very happy with my my Quasi cruises. Their, their guides have been top notch. Like they answer the normal questions and then 10 times deeper information. It's been great. 
But sometimes you're going to ports of call and you might feel like, man, that excursion they're offering seems a bit expensive or that excursion isn't what I really want to do. Well, the thing is you don't have to do the boat's excursions. You can set up your own. Look online to find travel agencies, tour guides, stuff like that, that can set things up for you so you can enjoy that destination on your own or that port of call with what you want to do. For example, here in Vise, I can go across the street and go rent a scooter on my own and go drive around the island, hit the beaches and stuff like that and have a nice time. And it's a cheap little extra thing out there. So don't feel like you have to do the excursions. Also, our next don't is don't feel like you have to do an excursion every single day. Look, if you're on a two week cruise and things like that, and you're doing excursions every morning and every afternoon, you're gonna get burned out. So maybe if you see that there's a town that the, the excursions don't really call to you, maybe you don't go on one. Maybe you just walk through town or maybe you just enjoy the bar in there and the hot tub and stuff like that. But the thing is, is don't burn yourself out by doing too many excursions. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. I'm on day seven of my cruise and I've been hitting, you know, one after the other, the excursions. And I can tell that I'm getting a little tired of like, man, this is awesome here. But man, I, I like to just, you know, sit at the bar for a bit and relax. And so do be careful with that. And especially if you're going to be traveling on cruises with kids, they burn out as well because you're always on the sea and with the air and the sun, they can really get kind of worn down quickly. Now my eighth don't for you is when you're doing these excursions, and if you do an excursion that's with someone else, make sure you are back before they say they're going to sail off. Our boat here says, look, you have time here in Vis, be back by 4.30. Why? Because they're gonna pull up and leave. And the bigger the ship you're on, the bigger the ship you're on, the more likely they're going to leave you behind. Now, I'm on the Belle del Adriatic, and we only have 200 people. So they're pretty cool with waiting a little bit. And if you got river cruises, they're pretty good with that. Just everyone kind of boos you when you're late. Um, but if you're on the bigger cruises, like the Mediterranean Ocean loot liners, if you're not there when they say to be there, they will leave you there. And it's up to you to get to the next port. So if you want to get your passport, you want to get your stuff that's on the ship, you're going to have to go get it and you're going to have to pay to get there and it can be very expensive okay so make sure you do not miss that last tender back make sure you are on that boat before you're supposed to go otherwise you may be waving as they take off and that does happen okay and like i said the bigger cruise ships more likely they're going to leave you behind now my ninth don't for you is don't be afraid to ask for help. Look, the people on the boat, they're there to help you. They want to help you. I mean, that's one of the awesome things about cruise lines. They do everything for you and they want to do everything for you. So let them. So if you have any questions or anything like that, just ask. The staff is there to help. So for example, one of the couples that we're traveling with, he had a dodgy stomach and she doesn't eat red meat. So we had a beef dish that was fantastic, by the way. And she said, hey, I don't eat red meat. They went out of their way to make her a nice fish dish instead. And when they told them that his tummy didn't feel well, they were like, we can get some medicine for you. We'll make a light meal for you. And they did that for them. And But the thing is, people get scared to ask. So make sure you ask. And if you're too scared to ask what the, what the itinerary for today is, make sure you don't forget to look at the newspaper that they give you. Like every day you'll get like a new thing saying, here's where we're gonna be, here's sunset, sunrise, here are the excursions that are on offer, here's when you have to be back by because we're leaving, don't make us leave you behind. They'll have those things for you so that can help out as well. Now the 10th don't I have for you is, don't expect to get along with everybody on the cruise. Like whether it's 100 people on a river cruise or 5,000 people on a big cruise liner, you're not always gonna get along with everybody. And that's one of the biggest kind of complaints I've heard from people when they've done smaller cruises. Because on smaller cruises, usually you're gonna be assigned to one table for the whole whole trip. So you're gonna be with the same people every single meal. So if you don't get along politically or ideologically or whatever, there can be issues like that. And sometimes it's not even a political discussion kind of thing. Sometimes it's a language barrier thing. I talked to an English couple on here. They said last trip we were on, there was, you know, three German couples and there was three, you know, French couples and then us and no one talked to us. They only talked amongst themselves and they kind of like made it tough, but don't expect to get along with everybody. And that's okay. It's just like the real world. You don't get along with everybody, but do try to be respectful to each other just so you can all enjoy the meal because it's going to be good. Oh, try not to overeat too much, but I'm not going to put that as a don't because psh, you'll enjoy it anyway. And the last don't I have for you is 
don't try to bring things on that you're not supposed to. Look, a lot of the cruise lines will have things they'll send out saying these are prohibited items for when you're on the ship. And a lot of it is for safety reasons. You know, they'll say no candles or no things with heating elements because fire is the most dangerous thing on a ship. And that's what you do not want. So usually heating elements, they won't let you have on there. So like I said, candles, usually you're okay with like a curling iron or something, but you know, some people want to bring an actual iron. That's a no go kind of thing. The bigger ships you're on, they might have like airport x-ray machines and say, no, no, you can't take that in, ma'am. Smaller boats are usually less checky, let's say, so you can get some of those things through, but you don't need to bring it because it can be an issue. And if you need some of those things, like an extra plug or, or an iron or something like that, again, go back. Don't feel scared to ask for help because there might be stuff in there for there. Okay, and obviously with it, with it, don't bring those things. Also, you know, you don't bring weapons, you don't bring drugs. Um, alcohol on some of the bigger ships they have restrictions you know you can only maybe bring wine but if they have any of those things don't try to strip you know jump over the rules or or think they don't apply to you because they do and a lot of times it comes down to a safety thing anyway those are my like 11 or 12 don'ts for cruising whether you're on the big cruise ships or a nice smaller one like this to enjoy you will have a great time cruising because you don't have to worry they take it all care they take care of everything for you anyway if you want to learn more about cruising or maybe visiting croatia check us out on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram youtube and we really appreciate your likes subscriptions